as issues, yearning for government intervention. Watch fresh episodes of Community Forum on Sundays by 9.30 p.m. only. All right, glad to have you back. If young Gekop is live in the studio for a review of market and trading for the week. If young, it's a new month and the market is still staying in red. Uh, what is your understanding of this? Take us through that and what we should expect in this month. Throughout this week, we've seen markets reflecting in a very negative way. Uh, rebalancing itself because in the last two weeks we were trading in green and prices were up in so many of the sectors. We've seen strategic investors moving in very quickly and offloading and taking profit out of the investment, especially one company that was listed in the market, say about uh, three weeks ago, Aradel Holding, playing in the oil and gas. We've seen investors coming to that particular company. They have been uploading mm. and making a huge, uh, uh, you know, money out of it. Uh, Aradel was listed at uh, a reasonable price of above 700 naira per unit. And, of course, it took the eyes of so many people in the market sectors. And we've been watching, you know, like today now, Aradel was down 10% at the close of our transaction. That same 10% it lost uh, yesterday, which, you know, going, you know, into the posses of uh, probably those who were earlier uh, in the board, or, you know, holding the IPs of the company. And we have seen other big companies like MCN, MCN down 0.06%, followed by UBA, then UBA subsidiary, United Capital also down, a very big cement company, WAPCO. So with all of this down, you can understand why we are ending the markets in, in red. Um, what does it mean? It still provides opportunities, you, you know, for those who want to enter the markets when the prices come down in some sectors yeah. and make them cheaper, you know, for them. But the fundamentals of the market and some of the companies, they are really good. Mm. It, it seems like... Um, investors' confidence is gradually returning. At that time, we used to really? have the domestic players playing the market. We have, we have many of them. Very active. Very, very active. Indeed, this is even the time that you may say investors' confidence in the market is uh, at the peak. Yes, um, you know, the rates at which we have frictions in the larger economy and inflation biting very seriously, then the poor value of the Naira, you know, it is difficult to do meaningful kind of businesses in so many other sectors of the market. So, Lou, I can uh, assuringly say that those who play in the stock market, they have um, less reason to worry about how their money, you know, is being taken care of, provided they did proper analysis before buying the stocks, and they are buying into a growing company. I think uh, they are really, you know, halfway out of uh, the situation. So only that the stock market, it, it also raises some kind of question for some people, saying, why is this sector, you know, riding very high mm. when we are experiencing all these frictions elsewhere. It means that those who understand how the market is working and they have money, instead of maybe wasting in doing other things, you need to go and take contract or you rent a shop and then electricity is not there or even the shop assistant pilfering, you know, so they put in the stock market. We are many of some of these companies, they already have good and efficient management and they take care of their monies. That is not to say we have to discountenance what yeah. we're supposed to have in other sectors. Yeah. We should be able to make other sectors of the economy to grow very well. So the stock market is what to watch. Remember, the year is gradually coming to an yeah. end. And that's from this November through next month, we are going to see the markets you know, coming up with very heavy levels of activities. I must thank you so much, my colleague there, Fionn Gekop. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Tolu. Asian markets started the month warily with shares mostly lower and Treasury yields near three months high. While investors wait for the U.S. job data, although a rate caught next week is largely baked in, Nasdaq features rose 0.5% thanks to a 5.3% jump in Amazon after the bell, which added $104 billion to its market cap. The embattled Intel also surprised with upbeat 
Revenue projections sending shares up 7% after the close. That helped both Eurostock 50 features and FTSE features inched up 0.1%. In Asia, Tokyo's decal fell 2.6% as a stronger year and clouded the outlook for Japanese exporters. The dollar rose 0.3% to 152.46 yen on Friday. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside Japan, on the other hand, rose 0.2% thanks to gains in Chinese stocks but was still down 1.3% from the week. Chinese blue chips gained 0.5%. Hong Kong Hang Seng rose 0.9% after a private sector survey showed factory activity returned to expansion in October. Almost finally, the International Monetary Fund says escalating trade tensions in Asia have put the economy at risk and increased market turbulence, ranging from China's property sector woes and the new EU tariffs in China's EVs. And according to the IMF, persistent downward price pressures from China can provoke trade tensions by hurting sectors in neighboring countries with similar export structures urging Beijing to take steps to achieve more, uh, more demand-driven recovery for its economy. IMF in its regional economic outlook report for Asia said longer than larger than expected slowdown in China would be harmful for both the region and global economy. In the latest forecast, IMF says it expects Asia's economy to expand 4.6% in 2024 and 4.4% in 2025 with loser monetary policy across the globe seen boosting private uh, sector demand by next year. And crude oil prices gained today, climbing more than $1 per barrel with paired losses as geopolitical tensions in the Middle East rose with the report. And Iran is preparing for a retaliatory attack on Israel from uh, Iraq in the coming days. Well, that's a report. Uh, U.S. West Texas intermediate crude sells for $71 34 cents per barrel with an upward review of 3 percent. Brent experienced an uptick of 2.84 percent to sell at uh, $74.86 per barrel. Bonnie Light sells for $78.62 down 2.84 percent and for the OPEC basket dealers are offering $71.27 with an upward margin of 0.68 percent. Well, that's our show today and for the week. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Stay safe and, of course, make some cash. I'll see ya.